Hey, how's it going? My name's Chef, aka Sam Mar on the PlayStation Network. And I'm with. And here's Kyle. Uh, and we're with this little girl in this cute little yellow outfit, aka Jeffrey. Yeah, so for what, you, you might not understand what exactly to watch right now, so I'm going to get a little context. So recently there was a beta, as you can tell in the top right corner, called Beta Test. This game is called The Tomorrow Children. So, The Tomorrow Children has been a game that was announced, I think, when the PS4 was first shown off, if not during the first year of the PS4. Um, it was released slash talked about. And what The Tomorrow Children is basically, in the shortest form I can give, is almost like a weird variety version to Minecraft. Um, Minecraft! Yeah, <laughs> except it's more of a, a communism-oriented Minecraft, so... Uh, yeah, there's like a Russian so, guy yeah. in here that gives you instructions, so, right? Or something? Yeah, so it's a Vladimir equivalent of, of, of Minecraft. It's actually Vladimir Putin that it just pops Vladimir out Putin. and gives Long you ass instructions. Nose, stares at you for days, terrifies you. Um, <laughs> so one of the reasons why we are uploading this is A... I want to play and show some content for this game because I do believe it is actually a very good game, even though there are problems with it. Um, I still think that this game has the potential to be something really good. Um, so yeah, I mean, Kyle, from your perspective, because Kyle is going to be kind of like you guys, where he doesn't really know what this is. I was the one that played this, and this is some footage of me playing it. Uh, what do you think of it? I mean, I'm just watching it right now. I mean, in from what I've seen, I've never played Minecraft. Uh, I've seen Minecraft, of course, because uh, there's so much stuff out there involving it, but from my knowledge, there isn't like a transportation system, which is what we're looking at right now in Minecraft. So that's that's pretty unique to this uh, game. Is it, are you in a city? Is this like a city that we're in? Because I see other people on that bus that we just got off of. Sure. Um, so from what I took away from the beta, from the bits and pieces, I see there's like monsters that you come across, such as like the little flying things at the beginning with goggles um, that look like weird bugs, and then there's like uh, the, the Godzilla-looking thing off in the distance that you saw in the background. Um, one of the premises of this game is town building. So you essentially get a randomized town that you occupy with a number of other living people that you sometimes see appear and disappear on the bus and in the town and whatnot that all collectively are pooling the resources they find slash gather through oh. the environment <laughs> such as what I'm doing here and yep there I am and died um, <laughs> so there is fall damage there is and actually I want to point this out so the game has uh, before I continue on my thought you can wait to be revived by, let's say, a comrade in the area. So you could wait for someone to come by and revive you. That is a viable option. An NPC or an actual person? A real person. Okay. Um, this Almost look at this as like a, uh, a, a, uh, a MMO Minecraft in a way. In terms of like the online structure. Okay. So people could just appear and disappear. Almost like a Dark Souls. Like okay. you'll see like people fading in and out of your own world, kind of. Because yeah, in, in Minecraft, couldn't you like made kind of a lobby kind of thing and people could join it something yeah, like that? Yeah, there's an online but they have to actively join yours. For this yeah. they can just pop in and out and you'll see them but you all occupy the same place mm -hmm. just you don't occupy the same actual physical space in that you kind of will see like flashes of one another and seeing what you each other do and you can kind of help one another if you see each other but that's about it. Um, so you can either wait for someone to assist you, spawn back in a town or you can spend some money, because there's two types of currencies in this game from what I've seen so far. There's cash that you get, called, uh, I think, free money? Freedom money or whatever? Or free man money? Um, which is, like, actual cash. You use it for, like, black market deals, so you can actually buy off the black market using a cell phone that you get uh, equipment from the, uh, the black market, and you get, like, a range of different things that you spend the actual currency off. The other currency you get is basically through this labor that you do. Kind of like current, like communism. You get, uh... Is it like tickets? Because I see tickets down Yeah, you basically right get the these tickets. Those tickets are actually the resources that the town has. That guy's so going away. Metal, Hello. Like, metal, electricity, <laughs> food, uh, people, wood, you know, things like that. That's like, you'll see in the bottom right all of those, like, indicators going up for the town. Like, that's the, the town you're occupying, like, that's what's going on there in terms of the resources. Mm. So we're going ham on this gold ore right now, yes. or whatever this is. Um, as you can tell, you know, the mining uh, goes in a little circle. 
Um, and one of the concepts of this game is you need to have light. If you're in the dark, you'll actually break down and die because you're essentially like a clone thing that can't survive in it without light. It's very interesting. So you're not um, an actual person? No. Wow. Which is why you can just like spawn and despawn. Very all the time communist. Um, <laughs> a cool thing I like about this game, what we're picking up right now, is, that is Russian doll. Yes. And the cool thing about it is that in their belief, I guess, and I have one on my back right now. Uh, one of the beliefs in this game, but also I think in Russian culture, is that when you die, you actually get put in these dolls to be basically reincarnated and reborn again from the dolls. It's like a weird religious belief or cultural belief that they have. Almost like an Egyptian belief with the organ dolls, kind of, or the organ statues in a way. It's weird, but it's cool. It's really, really cool. Um, but as I was saying before, there are two types of currency you get in the game, and the the, the, the other currency you get is basically from labor. Um, and that is what you can spend basically in town um, at the little kiosks that there are. Whereas the other type of money is basically just to like use on bribes, uh, to speed things up, to get black market resources and things like that. Man, look at that big guy over there. Yeah, yeah, they look like weird like Gal uh, Godzilla things. Um, and the reason why you take the bus is to basically get to these like kiosk or not kiosk uh, resource locations. You can mm -hmm. take the bus, come here, mine it. Once you're pretty much done or you don't have any more equipment to use, you bail, go back to the town, and basically start over. Um, yeah, as you can tell, the red footsteps all over the place from people that were about to die but didn't die. Um, yeah, um, this game was a lot of fun. Weirdly enough, it, it was addicting in the, in the same way that Minecraft is. It's very, it's very addicting because it has a weird itch that can scratch in the form of you know doing random things um, to build other things. Because that's what it all is. I mean, you get resources and you both share the resources with the town, but you also collect your own resources that you use to build things and create things. Um, such as like ammunition for the turrets to fight the Godzilla things and other monsters like these mm. weird spider, spider things. Uh, you can build your own house, you can build propaganda. Um, supposedly there's a voting system, I didn't really get much into it, but you can vote for people to like run the town almost. Vladimir yeah. Putin? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it actually might be actual real players that you vote for. I don't know, but huh. it was very interesting. Um, and there's a lot of different locations to go to um, that you will be mining resources at that uh, are all, like, very different. Like, this one has, like, a whale. There was one that I was messing around with that was, like, a weird laying down statue thing. It was weird, and there were, like, uh, enemies inside of it. Um, as you can tell, in the, uh, to the left, there's those spiders that I was talking about. And oh, they just holy crap. Yeah, and you can only go so far outside of the town and outside of this, like, area before you enter what's called, like, the, uh, the void, which basically is almost like quicksand. And you can only stay at these, like, resource locations for a certain amount of time before they basically collapse and break down. Because the void comes in slowly and will basically dissolve the place and... The whole place will become the void and you'll sink. And if you don't catch the last bus before leaving, when everything breaks, you're basically fucked. <laughs> um, so wait, soon enough, everything will be consumed by the void? Yeah, like in the next like 15 minutes probably. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Um, which I don't, I didn't get consumed that in this point. There's other gameplay that I did that later on that I do get consumed by the void. But yeah, that's basically what happens. And then at the top right now you see the current population. And you get statues when you fulfill certain things that basically, that basically improve your town. When you accomplish certain things like recycling this amount of time of items or gain this uh, amount of people in your town. Like population wise and things like that. I'm just, I'm t I'm kind of looking at the art style right now a little bit like how she kind of looks uh, like a doll herself like her face mm -hmm. I don't know if like you turn around anytime sooner if we look at the face but uh yeah her face looks very yeah look at her face right there. it looks very doll like yeah it looks and, porcelain uh, yeah like the whole place yes. looks like porcelain in a way yes yeah um and that that little island thing just looks I don't know just different. Mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, you can't really decide if it's a mountain, if it's 
Yeah, it candy. Looks, <laughs> yeah, it looks like <laughs> it looks like ice, but it also or doesn't ice, look like ice. Yeah. It's weird. Like, um, um, yeah, you can tell you get items like flares, and uh, you can get ladders. So is that your inventory that you were going through? Yeah, so the right backpack there? is on the left, that's all the stuff in your backpack, but you also can go to the right and get other stuff. Like, that's where, like, when, when you buy guns, they go in there. Guns? Um, other items, yeah, you get, like, a shotgun. That I, I bought a shotgun at one point. Huh. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, this game heavily interested me. Um, because there's always been... The one thing about Minecraft for me was... That always kind of bothered me, was that felt very... Kind of lonesome in a way, because um, I mean you could play with other people. But predominantly, you would play by yourself. And while I am a solo player, it always felt very isolated because there wasn't really a story, and there wasn't really a big goal other than just build the world the way you want it, which is a very cool idea. But it's also kind of a empty idea when you finally complete that. Like there's not much else to do. This game kind of fulfills almost like the opposite end where it gives you kind of a specific goal because the goal is per, like help your town, get resources, build it up, and maintain it. It's almost got like a SimCity vibe hmm. in a way. Except each individual person has to do that for their town and multiple towns, um, which I find very, very interesting. What There was a little screen that you went into... Sure. Uh, a few, like, a few oh, frames back. Yeah. I think it was like a leveling up system. Is there, there a leveling up system in this? There is a leveling up system. Uh, so pretty much it's based upon how much work you do uh, in various capacities. Most of the levels I got was from uh, mining or just like breaking stuff and you know, like just working. But you do get levels from also uh, basically going into... Gosh, it looks kind of creepy. <laughs> I know, right? And here's the black market that I was talking about, where you can buy stuff um, using your cash versus uh, your uh, your other type of currency, which is the name of it's escaping me right now. But I want to say it's uh, it's almost like uh, not coupons, but uh, almost like vouchers, if you will. They're almost like tickets in a way versus actual cash because they're basically just exchange material that you use in order to get something else. Because that's how, that was kind of how the USSR USSSS, <laughs> the USSR worked during communism era is they work heavily off of basically an exchange system that you do your required work, we will give you what you need in return. So you do your work, we will give you this amount of money depending how many tickets you basically got uh, for the work you did. And so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um... But no, there is a leveling up system, and there's multiple different categories, uh, health, strength, dexterity, so you can, like, increase how quickly you mine, uh, how much health you have, how good you are with the gun, I think, uh, how political you are, so it makes you better for, like, playing an RPG. <laughs> kind of, I mean, there are RPG, well, and this game does have RPG elements. It has role-playing elements, um... And one of the other things I really like about this game is there's an outfit system. And you can tell, as you can tell, I'm wearing this like yellow looking outfit thing. And the thing about it is the outfits all do something different. So I, really? end up getting, I end up getting an outfit later on in this game that basically is a minor outfit that I, uh, I basically become a better miner. I can mine quicker and mine more effectively and it's very interesting um so each outfit has a a use there's different types of items to use um yeah there's a lot to this game it's deeper than people give credit and as you can tell people were laying these like like it's almost like red bridge and what it can actually be walked on in the void so someone was trying to make a bridge from like one of the locations to go mine to the town is, is someone is an NPC driving that or is yes. it an actual person? No, it's that, an NPC. That NPC. It looks like a real person. Looked like he was about to drive right into that bridge. Well, and, you know, <laughs> and to point out some of the flaws, you know, obviously some of the NPC oh, issues, oh, but oh, also man, he's getting real close. Well, up. no, but I mean, wow. it, it clips through oh, stuff. Okay, yeah, that's some of the issues. You know, it clips <laughs> through stuff. Um, oh well. So there are issues with the game. There, there's no doubt about that. I mean, it oh, clips through oh, stuff all the oh, time. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> because you, know, you, have to, you have to keep in mind, people made this town and just put stuff everywhere. So the the bus, that's true. The, the bus that's route true. 
the bus route's already predetermined, but because people are building this town, they might not remember where the bus goes, and the bus just goes through stuff. So it doesn't look good, but also kind of allows the bus to not really be hindered by anything. So it's one of those things where they might be able to clean up by the time the game comes up, but who knows. Um, so what I'm trying to do right now is actually try and create more citizens. So with these dolls, I'm trying to find this like tree thing where there are like three buttons around it. And you put down these dolls onto the buttons and they will start generating people. And that's hmm. how they basically create more NPCs and more citizens to work in this town to basically upkeep the trees, like the guy to the right, right there. Um, it creates more, you know, guards, it creates things like that, and guys like that. And I think I find it right here. Yep. So I put it down, and then it gets like this weird force field thing around at some point. Um, what was the timer? It says 335 at the top of it up there? Or is that just your population? I believe that's the population. Okay. So then here's the worksheet. It is, a, it is a ration coupons, that's right. Um, so my total score from doing all this stuff, you know, um, I get ration coupons based off that, and I get a ranking. And as far as I understand, the ranking helps you when it comes to uh, the mayor races. So like running for mayor and things like that. So it helps with a lot of that. Um, and yeah, there's a lot to this game. I mean, you can get boxes. That's what all the items you call in uh, come in. And you open them up to get the items that you called in for or whatever. Um, but people can also drop them and leave them around. You can pick them up and use them if you want. Chainsaw, wonderful. And you can you can steal <laughs> stuff. You can steal stuff from other people. So there's oh, actually wow. like a, there's a system in place in the game that you can actually get traps and then basically booby trap areas and people, so that if they try and take your stuff, basically they can't do anything about it. Um, what yeah, if you catch them? What happens they, then? Do you know? I, that I don't know because I never really caught anybody. And I don't know if anybody has caught anybody yet. But it's one of those things that we'll see going forward. What all there is. Um, Whoa! Your doll disappeared. Yeah, because it came up. It became a person. Oh. Yeah. Uh, as you can tell, there's creepy. multiple shops. So the union shop is where you buy like your materials, like your all your like uh, chainsaw, shovels, pickaxe, <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, then there's the arsenal shop, which is. Or the military shop, which is why you, where you buy like, your guns and stuff, but you need your license to get those, which I don't know how to get your license for those yet. Um, and then there's also the electronic shop, which you buy electronics from, and you get a apparel shop where you buy apparel. Here's a workbench. This is where you basically build all your stuff, and if you have the right materials and enough materials along with the permit, then you can build whatever you want to build. And you can build a building and put it anywhere you want. Yep, so long as at the top, you see that red bar, mm -hmm. that's how much space is left to work with, that let, let little tiny, or how much space has been taken up. So if there's still enough uh, room between that bar and the, like, so long as it's not capped, then you can still keep putting stuff down. That's why the there's, uh, there's typically that little weight icon above each item to the left of it, like right above it, right beneath like the beta test. It'll say, like, Okay, this is how much it weighs, and this is how much it's gonna like take into the population. So when you make stuff, you have to solve puzzles. The easier they are, or like the the cheaper they are, and the big like the lesser effect they have in the grand scheme of things, such as you know, these bullets I'm making, these shells for the turrets, they're not the most important thing in the world, right? They're just kind of making small things for everybody. They're not that hard to make, so these puzzles are really simple. However, there are other puzzles for like building buildings that are going to have really complicated puzzles like these. Uh, I think they have grids of like four by four and five by five even Ooh. of trying to solve up to like where to put number one through sixteen in order from like left to right all the way down. And it's really complicated. It's kind of hard and it's time consuming. You can cheat by doing the quick solve, which I've done a few times. I'll admit <laughs> because some of those were really ridiculously hard, but. Uh, at the same time, all not all of them are so hard that um, that you have to use it constantly. This one isn't that bad, which is nice. Um, is there a payout for doing it without the the quick solve? Basically, you don't spend your Freeman monies. I mean, you, you avoid using them, uh, and uh, okay. I would assume you might even get some like workbench experience, and then you get some experience that way and level up maybe by becoming a better workbench user, which is possible. I don't know. Um, yeah, and I, here I am just, like, making more and more shells, so, <laughs> um, 
So from what you've seen so far and what we've talked about so far, what would be some of your biggest concerns for a game like this? Um, right now, I don't have any big ones. Okay. I don't really have any large concerns that I see. What are some of the concerns you had while playing it? Um, I mean, I never noticed anything in terms of how it ran. I mean, it ran really well, for what I could tell. I mean, there are, obviously the bus thing was something to notice, and there are a few other things like yeah. graphical hitches or texture drops or things like that. But, I mean, a game that's in beta, that's kind of expected. So there wasn't really anything that happened that was groundbreaking mm -hmm. for a beta. Um, I guess, they're, like, since you have to work with people yeah. in the game... There will probably be your occasional, like, few trolls or something like that that would come into your town and kind of wreck it, I guess. Maybe, yeah. like, just for whatever reason, fun, I guess. Yeah. That what they call is it, fun. Yeah, Greek. Which isn't fun to most people. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that might be an issue that. I mean, they, you can't really take care of that because it just is some, like, people just tend to get joy out of coming into something and ruining someone's hard work. <laughs> yeah, no, that's completely right. I mean, Minecraft dealt with a lot of problems with griefers is what they're called. Basically, people that steal your shit or basically troll you slash fuck with you. Yeah. Um, and that was something that I was concerned with, too, uh, what... Like, let's say someone gets, someone literally, like, you, all the money that, like, there's a shared currency, right, like you talked about? No, the currency is all you. Um, the, like, the Friedman dollar is just basically black market money that you okay. collect, and you can basically hold on to to buy your own stuff for The yourself. building money. When you build stuff in the town. Oh, like, resources and stuff. Yes. Yeah. That is shared, right? Yes. Okay. A lot of it is shared. So let's say someone gets it right away. And they just start building random crap that yeah. you really don't need, you know. Like that's... spam a bunch of buildings. Yeah. You know? And yeah, that's something I did notice. Like there, were, there was one town that I was part of that had a shit ton of turrets. Um, for no reason. Yeah. So anyway, that's the end of this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. See ya. Bye. Peace.